in for repair today we have our Hitachi Mini Digger. We also have a Ford Ranger, a BMW car, John Deere 7710, Toyota Forklift. We also have our NC Bucket in. We have our WIFO Forward Tipler and we have the high spec slurry tanker. But first of all, so first before we get started on this St. Valentine's uh, workshop Wednesday, I'd like to give a few shout outs there. First of all, to Oshin, Kieran, and Kyle from Screen, who is Berta on Torsha. So that's tomorrow. Happy Berta Oshin, a big fan of the channel. We also have a truck and tractor run. It's Shine for Smithy, and it takes place Saturday, February the 17th. Registration from 5.30 p.m. in Shannon Gales GA field. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's also a good charity there. So, that's it. So, first of all, we'll head over to Mick. Well, Mick, what's going on here? I think we found the cause of our leak in our little Hitachi digger. I think yes. Carl showed it there a while ago. Remember, piss and oil Yeah. This is a rotary distributor. This links the top end of the, from the cab, boom and all that, to the track end. Okay. Obviously, you can't have the hoses boiling and boiling. So what happens here is the oil. Let me think now. What to think about this? The oil comes into these ports here, lines up with the grooves where the holes are, goes down through that and corresponds to a port down here. This rotates with the bottom. This rotates with the top. Right, and we have I think it's eight or nine ports down, down you through. You can it. actually see the drill holes here at the bottom where the po ports are drilled. How many have we got there? Three. Yeah, should we? Six, 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 yeah. Seven and one, eight. Eight, yeah. There's a centre one as well. But I think that's a dump. But with what happened by the looks of it, that's a seal land there. And it is as rough. Yeah. It's chewed. Now how we correct Just that? <clears throat> Don't know. I'd polish it up and see how it comes up. Yeah, it's a polish with a bit job, of memory. I think so. Hopefully we'll get away with that. Because I did not want to be taking this thing out again. So we got a seal kit, but unfortunately... It's um, wrong. It's too big. <coughs> yeah, so we got it off the way to blow and kind of, but we need to just refer to it. Now they have another seal kit, but this is the one we got. But as you can see, it's... Way too big. Way too big. Because <laughs> those orange ones, they go in, there's eight, seven grooves, I think, up along eight grooves. And each one, that separates each little... There's your, where your seals are running there, those two lines there. Those, that one there. Each one of these, one... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Plus the one down the middle. There are your tracks for the oil. And the oil is locked in between the two of them there. Yeah. And runs down through the port. And now whatever, you would have to blow it. I don't know which one that's going to. Guessing it's that. So there, them seals are obviously flexy enough to get in there. This, like there's not a lot of... That was dog tight. I tapped it and it dead, dead freed in. Yeah. Like John was saying, it was weak on the tracks. Now, there could be another issue. I'm not 100% sure yet. But well, I, if I, these I, were I, leaking, yeah, well, that's now hold on, there's a high-low switch on that, sorry, Yeah. On for tracking, and she won't uh, slew or track one way or the other if it's in high, if it's on concrete. Right, I Now, the switch is yeah. knackered, and I think we'll put one up on the side of the dash down here. Yeah, well, I definitely had it the other day, and I thought it was definitely weak on the, just yeah, on, but on the, the tracking, the, the, but if the switch is stuck there, it's just, right, okay. It's in high. All right, so <coughs> speed. that's your rotary valve. Uh, we just need to get, get the correct seals for it. This end of it is easy, but boys, yeah, it's getting out of here, isn't it? Getting it back in is going to be more fun than that. No, 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 bother, no bother to you, Mick, for God's sake. <laughs> that's that's, that's uh, everyday stuff for you. Bread and butter. It's a long time since I did one. Is it? Oh. You, well, you worked on tracks years ago on machines? Yeah, yeah, on Hymax, which are not around. They were really the original. It's like JCB is the... Every 180 degree digger is the JCB in the old days. Right. And every uh, 360, 360 full rotation. Is um, called, was called Hymax. Hymax, yeah. We had one here. Yes. We had one here. Mm -hmm. Wasn't a great joke, but how an hour. Oh, jeez, it did its job. Right. Glad, for glad, glad to get rid of it. Um, now, I see you with something else over here. Just so, Mick, what is this contraption here you have in your this hand? This is a window regulator out of the Ford Ranger. And basically, what happens is when you go down, your motor is in here at the back. And that. Go on, down. Come on. Yeah. And then when it comes back up, this cycles through that. See so it? Your window is attached here. Yep, on those two, and this is a brace one here on the side for the scissors action. Okay. Very good wearing not to. But the biggest problem was, there, we have no teeth in the, it was in the bottom part that was sticking. Or was it the top? I can't remember. But that's a problem there. See, our, your motor is attached to that. Yeah. yeah, that's another another problem. And then you have also another piece over yeah, here. Yeah, a bed. good one, one I've yeah, never seen before. Right, okay. 
as for the Mick never seen it, it must be very rare. That's a piston out of a brake caliper, out of your 120, the, uh, the yeah, BMW. Yeah. Are you putting you with a worn light on the dash, I thought it was worn pads, because these have a... More nice! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Mick is gone. I'll settle down in a minute there. Ah, Murphy's law this, isn't it? Marco's up there laughing, probably. He's probably laughing there because you're trying to talk here. He knows well. Mm. Anyway, right, Mick, take two. What's going on? Uh, one I've never seen before. Okay. Uh, it's a brake caliper, a sliding caliper off a um, BMW 120 diesel D, Pals yeah. car. And we don't want only 100 dash for the brakes. The brake fluid level is okay. These have wear pad wear indicators on the pads. And I thought they were actually down. Changed them and I put new pads in, put it back together, pumped and pedal, pedal didn't feel right, went around with a pool of oil on the floor. That's, well, I won't say what I said. <laughs> Camera. And there's the piston there, but if you look, we have a hole in it. And basically what happened is when the pads were worn, this was out past the seal. When I put new pads in, that went past the seal and the oil pissed out there. All right, okay. Yeah. yeah. These are very good little systems, they're self-adjusting brake. In there, we have a wiper seal here at the front, <coughs> and then at the back there, we have what's called the square section O-ring. And basically, it allows, that when you press the brake pedal, that moves very slightly out, jams the two pads, caliper slides, jams the two pads. And when you release the pedal, the O-ring brings it back just slightly, okay? But it's also self-adjusting for wear. When that can't move or distort the square section O-ring sufficiently, yep. it slides in the O-ring. So it will it's kind of wear, wear, wear the time, as the yeah. pad wears, so it'll wear with it. Yeah. Oh, well, it'll travel, it'll with, travel the pad. Out with it, yeah. But uh, I've never seen that, it was rotten inside in it. This, this thing How cost that salt? I'm it? guessing. It's very light. Yeah. Very, very light. Because normally there's a bit of weight in them, this one is. So that's the first for you, Mick. Yep. Speaking about that car that was going through the NCT, well, it went for an NCT and. Passed virtually everything, but it failed on brakes. Passed okay. Yeah, well done. But, uh, but um, it failed on driver's side dip light, offside front dip light. We put it up against the wall. Carl has it on video there. Uh, they're H7 bulbs, and very often H7 bulbs, I found the filament in them droops and screws up the focus, so you get a washy pattern. But I put a new bulb in it, didn't improve it, but the lamp was too high. And as you can see on the video, we readjusted the lamp. We were good on the left-hand one according to the NCT. Yeah. So what I did is I dropped the right-hand light to match. match the line. And if you look at the video on it, it they're on dip, it's what's called an asymmetric beam. You have a 15 degree riser up to the left for driving on the left-hand side of the road to pick up people walking on the road, but you don't dazzle people coming to come the right. Coming the opposite, yeah. correct. That's the one you, in the old days, I don't know if it's done anymore, you had to put the tape on the headlamp if you were going to come in. Yeah, but we probably see a lot of guys would put on the... <laughs> To do the mods on the lights and the hardless. Yeah, when you're putting the LED lights in, so you had them in that. And it's uh, a well, they were in it when I bought yeah, but, but you can't yeah. get a focus on them. No. I'm glad Caleb worked in there. How he managed it, I don't no, know. No, you know Caleb. Yeah, so he he found, would. Probably Google and found out somewhere. Yeah. Maybe done it himself. Yeah, no, and his were clean, flat across. Yeah. Like it, it won't fail with no asymmetric. If it's dead flat across and not dazzling and below the noise. The line, it's yeah. just a highlight. Now, what, we haven't tested it yet. I'm, I, ideally, you want to be putting it on a beam setter. But I think it's worth a try. Yeah. Well, the dark, yeah. Well, the shed was probably. Yeah, all, no, no, all, the, all we had. Sheds are great over there with the white doors. Yeah. You have a lovely clean line on it. So anyone that has a seven, eight, ten, seven, seven, ten will know what this is off. The side grid, uh, the next, uh, next to front, it's spring loaded. Except this one has popped off a few times. Uh, you push down here onto the spring, clips up here, and it's held with these two lugs. Problem, Mick, we're having is. Keeps on off. Yeah, they're, all, they're looking at it. That looks to be to start it up. You're relying on the spring down here to keep the lug here, the two lugs on top, locked in. If that's not holding, so I reckon we'll throw a bit of heat on it and bring so it down. So that looks to be. I least. imagine that should be Twisted. somewhere like that. Yeah. You can see yeah, the, the bulge in there. You can yeah. see the bulge in it here. So plan of attack. Two of them are not great. Plan of attack is to put a little bit of a heat there with the heat going on it. We're good to go, we'll try this. Yeah. If it doesn't work out, it makes what happens. Doesn't work, doesn't work. Plan B, then C. Yeah. And keep going. We might have to manufacture a little bit of a brace or something. Yeah. We haven't got a lot of room in there for we can, we can regulate the temperature here anyway with this. Leave that's over, man. 
No, no, come over. Cool no, that no. actually, Paul. Huh? Cool it. Too flexible. Little bit of a nick. Better, is little it? bit of a nick in it there. See what it's there's a bit of a crack in it, is there? Is there? No. No. No, no I think no. it's just yeah, a yeah, pattern yes. of it. Yeah, yeah, they're right. Maybe heat that again or just see if I can get that to come in a bit square to give it more support. Just there. Mm. Okay. Cool. Just heating that up pretty quick. It's gone a bit too far. We try a twist on this now. Yeah. Try and square the hook. Heat again, so here. The hole's elongated too, wouldn't it? Mm. Well, there is a slot on I think, anyway. Oh, I can smell it. Jig, mind the paint on the outside. Bit better, isn't it? But this one here is slightly gone as well now. It's a bit Similar gone. to it. Yeah. There's probably more pressure on this one when that one was. Yeah. So we'll heat that one as well, Mick. Yep. We go to side first. Where do you want, you want the side? Say, see the way that's in? Yeah. We try and pull that to, to me just to push it. Okay. Like if that's gone out, that's gone up. That'll be my theory. Oh yeah. Good. Yeah, try it. It's going, it's going very easy, isn't it? That's putting it for a bike. No, no, go on. Wanna go another way? Yeah. <clears throat> We're here on there and I go I clamp it directly. We're down on into there. Yeah. I'm gonna start this a bit now, but Enough? Yeah, yeah, cool. <coughs> it's you. Well, no. We try a twist on this. Oh, a little bit there, yeah. You're going, to, you're going to heat it up again. Well? It might be too bad, actually, will it? We'll go with that. Yeah, because I think that thing goes up a bit. Yeah, it does. It goes up pretty well. We we'll try to, see? So we went to put the side guard on, which is fine, straight in that, but now we're after finding the more likely cause. Your spring is missing, Rick. Yes, see that new? And it's an odd ball because if you look here, it's wider at the top, so it'll catch the bottom of this. Yeah. So it's a special. A special spring that we're going to have to get. I think so. And um, the fact that probably the spring was gone and it probably twisted down, but it's it going to keep falling off. down on that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, need to get a spring, so stick it into it. So Dave was a bit jealous there. He seen Marco going round with his forklift and <laughs> his toolbox attached to it. So this was a forklift that came into the workshop. Uh, there was a lot of problems with the... Uh, yeah, the whole axle was the falling. The whole axle out. was falling out. Yeah, across basically, basically. Yeah, yeah. Pins, every, king pins, everything. Every bush in, uh, in it was literally gone. There was some of them that would have been rebuilt up before. Yeah. And uh, there was different sort of bearings put into them, so we... we had a little bit of trouble with them. We had to get one of them um, remade. Yeah, and, 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 uh, uh, yeah, the a new bush, new bottom bush, and the. Uh, yeah, but look, nothing that couldn't be sorted. Yeah. As we said, it was just we had to. There was a bit of jigging around there, kind of getting the right, yeah. right uh, bearings to fit into it.
but once we had that on, you would have seen a picture of, or a video of David there putting it all together, mm. and we put the wheel ballast back on it, or the weight ballast back on, now it just does look an awful lot better, and it's it's actually, yep. steering is very good well, on it now. Probably yeah. a life, lifetime factor, really, yeah. if you kind of look after them. Different uh, engine on machine, them. Yeah. yeah, and as he said, it has a toolbox now, he's a bit of modifications to do to a jet, just to, yeah. you need a roof as well there, David. Well, yeah. Bit of, bit, of, bit of comfort. It's not ideal in this wet weather. <laughs> Look at it's grand. It's, a, it's, it's just because if you're, the, the yard is so big and anytime we need to bring tools, we have the scooters which are fantastic, but you do need a little fox there. And, just and no lift. matter where we're going, you might need the fox lift just to give a lift or whatever yeah, it is. And yeah. it's just handy. It's, just, it's, it's handy as well because it has the low mast um, and it's a little short fox lift, so it's handy for in around. Bits yeah. and pieces. But anyway, the axe is completely done up in it now, so that probably should see its yeah. lifetime. I put uh, greasers in the in, in the axles too because there was none in them, and uh, there's cone bearings in them, there's taper bearings in them, yeah. and they're just they just need that little bit of grease every now and then. Yeah. So a pump every now and then does them, but I just drilled them and put greasers in them. Little should, enough, little enough, little enough. Little enough is right, yeah. Right, so that's, that's good. That's the factor back in action. So we have our cutting edge back in on the NC bucket. As you can see, this is the old one that we've taken out, and mm. it was well warm. Oh yeah, that. all ends gone. Look. Yeah. So if if uh, if the ends do go, it can cause an awful lot of other problems to the bucket, can't it? Yeah. Then the one this plate, bottom plate on the bucket, and the sides be gone as well. Yeah. So we can crack down the side yeah. of that, and that can just distort the bucket then in time. So really, putting that a blade like that back, we've gone slightly. Well, it's yeah. thicker there, I see. Yeah, it's much thicker. I think this one was 15 mil. 15, 16 mil. And this yeah, one this here is, is 25. No, 20, 20. 20 mil. 20 mil. Oh, yeah, 20 mil. And yeah. then we've gone, it's gone, it's eight inches long, so you can get a good well back in on the bucket there as well. Yeah. yeah. To keep it straight, is that a problem? Yeah, all blade was a little bit yeah. like banana snow. I get straight. No, very good few straps you know i make supports like last time when i cut bucket change blade all was like c yeah all was very hard to get straight so now i put supports before then you i cut, cut. <laughs> oh it's getting clever on the job here yeah. experience experience yeah yeah <laughs> It's not an easy job to do this now, so it's not. It no, be... it was not too bad, Paul. You see, all is new. It's new. Yeah. You know, plates stay still straight. It was not too bad. Cut with plasma. Yes, and you like welding too, don't you? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. happy, you're happy when you're welding. <laughs> you love to weld, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, better than be outside <laughs> on the rain. <laughs> yeah, well, look, it is important just to keep that, and it's also easier then for the operator. Um, you know, because there's an awful lot of wear here. There's the most wear of this bucket is because of just of the application it does yes. uh, with the sweeper on it. And it's always important to keep a good edge to keep the, you know, yes. keep it straight then. At yes. least you're able to bring all the, the dirt back into the bucket. And yeah, that seems to be a good job. So how long will that last, Marco? What's the guarantee now on something uh, like this? For two years. Experienced uh, more be who be drive this. All right, okay. Yeah. Be so. Because some guys I see use this bucket for lifting stones other shapes off yeah look at the nc is a great sweep i have to say and i would be very happy with this and this is the one with the galvanized so there's no rust in it Ooh. and again a very important part of machinery especially around any farm you're there because you know just keep roads yeah. clean and even we use it here in the yard for all the time just for you know if we've any yeah, muck around yeah. in the yard there especially coming off clouds and that 
you can just put it on. It's on this little baby mitt man or two here, as we call it, when we tip around the ad and we bring it then to the to the fields or to the road. Then it's just on the bigger one. But yeah, a great uh, great asset to have to any, any farm. So the first time now we have our forward tippler on. Marco has welded these brackets, and he has put another support um, bit into it there as well, just to kind of strengthen the hub. So really, all we had to do is we had to lengthen the pipes. The pipes are too short and we changed them. They were all metric fittings now. They are metric on this side, but we changed them to 3 8 on this side. In case we ever did bust a pipe, at least then we have the fittings to do that and you're not kind of rooting with, with uh, metric fittings, even though they're probably getting more popular now. So we have Dara, the man, and he is going to be the first lad to tip in the box. So best of luck to you there now. It's fairly simple. Um, there is, as we pointed out, Mark was looking at that, there is a lever here and the idea of that is that when you when you lift back uh, one function is able to tip tip then and do the next function and it's able to do that automatic so it's still only on the one on the one lever that he's able to and the one button inside the manager right go on hop in there now and see what you see what you're made of so as you can see dara is going to just lift that back first of all this comes in out of the way ideally we'd have the bigger manager on it but just to demonstrate how it works we'll just it's probably the handiest one that was here on the yard. So now he has it straight. So at this stage then he can tilt it back maybe and bring it back to my shade and then let down the, the top bracket. Very careful on it there, isn't he, Carl? Ah, he's afraid of making it. We are going to get John B to do it because he's more experienced, but he just said we leave, leave it to the younger man today. That's it. Right down there, yeah, go ahead. So again, once that rests on that, it's fairly secure at that. Now, it's just going to lift her up with a few, uh, they're just old cattle feed there for the cows. And just to demonstrate, because we don't want to damage the goods, I suppose, just in case it goes wrong. That's really it, not a whole lot to it. There is one or two spuds still left in it, but if you did shake the box, it probably won't come out of it. So again, a very, very gentle tip on the bidet is just roll a nice forward, straight out of the box, straight into that box, and then just do the reverse action then. Tip the back. So once the arrow tips that back then, once it comes down on that function, it hits that lever on the, on the valve, and then it opens the top. Not so bad for your first time, no. huh? Hope you're as good getting into the planter with me. We have, we have the expert here beside us. This is the man that uh, actually recommended it, didn't you? Did, yeah. Yeah, so John says, get a forward tepler, see how it goes. So yeah, we have it for this season. Spuds much easier than spuds, uh, yeah. And they're much easier actually putting them in, into yeah. the... into and the. to pick up. Yeah. Yeah, no, probably yeah, are, yeah. No top bar, like, and hit yeah, and I know most guys will still have the... the the side tipplers yeah. on the farms, and they, they are still a great job, but they can be, especially as spuds and that, and on uneven ground, yeah, it can be very hard on them. Pick it up, you, you knock off the top of your box. Yeah. Right, pour it away there, get her ready for the planting season. A few last touches here on the high spec tanker. Oh, we're we checking for here, David. Just checking for the oil going into the veins. Yeah. That's all, just to make sure that we kind of have that drift per second. Once we have the... So the, basically what we have in the back of it here is an oil pump in the back of it ran by a little small sprocket and the oil pumps into your, your drippers here and then turn and they go down into your, into your chamber here with oil up your, the veins that we were fixing earlier on. Yeah. And once you have that nice drip of oil coming down, so it's in neutral there now at the minute, but basically doing nothing, so it's, it's up idle. Now we've so feel that suction, suction there. Savage suction there, yeah. That's spread there, that's over here, isn't it? That's your spread, that's your pressure, yeah. Five, isn't it? Yeah, black one. 
pressure plane plane fire. Yeah, so. yeah, so I want to be checking on a daily basis to, that that oil is not recovered on so yeah. it'll be it'll be fed into your chain and either blown out through the exhaust or pumped into your tank. Right, so just the final check then, just to check with the vacuum pump, because on the top here we have we have vacuum and we have pressure. Yeah. Obviously when it's above the zero and we're in the spread position, the pressure should rise. Yeah, it should rise, yeah. Yeah. Which it has been doing. Yeah. And yeah. it should show half of what? Oh, you would have around half. 0.5, it says 0.5. 0.5 yeah. Uh, pressure there bar when it when it blows off and then when it's in the vacuum position yeah to be honest which i'm not 100 percent sure whether it's good what does the gauge tell us there on that that's a, a half bar as well yeah so and that's max so you, you can see, see little red marks little on the red line in it there isn't it yeah so yeah a half bar but it, it shouldn't really get to that yeah well it's important to have that gauge working on it, it is, yeah. so this is the final time hopefully we'll see the high spec tankers in uh yeah as we said we we brought them into a few small jobs and ended up completing well, it through the two of them. Mick, Mick decided went mad with lights here. Uh, Dave went mad with the pumps, but thank God now everything is, we're just waiting on one glass there from your son was supposed to drop it in, uh, but he might still do that, and that's to go into that. Uh, the pair of them are very busy at the moment. Yeah, so them boys are flat out there. But as you can see, we have the stickers on, and they do kind of, as I say, they do kind of liven up a little bit and, and take the, the, just the, maybe the raw look off it. Again, that one, Mick has the side lights on, and, uh, I'm not slagging you there, but make it no, 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 it's crooked really there, crooked. is it? So you're rushing there last night, I know you were, weren't you? But grand little side light on it there, it's actually very bright. Really bright, isn't it? Mm, yeah. uh, I don't know if they're more reversing light, we'll see what it's like at night time. Uh, Wheels were painted on that one, they were, the rims were fairly rusty on that, so mm. Cahill done a job on that, good camera on there. We have Giles McCormick, Giles, TY student from? Yeah, Wilson's Hospital School. Go man. In County Westmead. Right, okay, the compressor's kind of noisy there in the background there, we might just wait till it stops. But Giles has come in there for a few days, as we say, he's on TY and has a great interest in farming and machines and everything that goes with it. So uh, he's actually got the job of cleaning down the wheels here. Aye. So TY Giles, are enjoying it there at the minute here? That's good, yeah, good handy year now. It's a handy year? Yeah. I thought that's supposed to be very uh, educational year, isn't oh, it? I know, it's handy academic wise now. Is it? But yeah, we're doing lots of activities now throughout the year and right. I enjoy the work experience now. I like that part of it. And yeah. And good. what do you hope to do? What's the future hold for you? Do you know yet? Uh, love to work with machinery. Oh God, you're in a good spot here, so. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, good spot now. Yeah, uh, right, good man, good man. Yeah, you're a JCV man as well, I see. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah fond of the JCV. Yeah. yeah. All right, okay. Well, look, he's here for a few days, as he said, and he's going to get loads. Not going to get, you know, we get plenty of experience. Ah, uh, yeah. See how we go on here, so. Right, no. Yeah, come on, we'll let you walk away no. now. distance it was okay we didn't have a sight now we did put as we said we did put two lights in the back of that work lights and we did put a switch in didn't we make yep in there and the switch is you in see the way it interferes with the indicator yeah, but anyway it does, it does. the two yeah, shouldn't be on together true there'll be no harm no yeah. so that's a great job on that as well we didn't put a light in this just probably didn't it's up to you. Bother, so we didn't, no. didn't bother, yeah. Go and them. <laughs> uh, and we have put the markers right around the two of them there, and they are a fantastic job as well, the reflectors on them. And really that's it. Um, I don't think there's much more now at this stage we can do with them, but just leave them ready to go. 